you know, I was looking at some of the comments to this YouTube employee and the incident that happened. And some of y'all think you wrote something very important and you really didn't. Some of y'all wrote, well, he was tailgating uh, someone in a building. So what? So what? Oh, so white people don't tailgate into a building because I've seen you do it. Okay, I've seen white people do that. And number two, why is it that y'all can't resolve anything without a cop being involved? That sounds like you got some damn issues. So no matter how mundane or petty a situation is, you need a cop involved. That tells me you sound psychotic. That's what you sound like. You sound like a psychopath. I mean... Everything that happens, a cop got to be there. Then that tells me somebody that raised you, they failed. They failed because they didn't teach you any people skills. Racism over people skills, huh? So that's all you're doing when you write stuff like that. You're just showing how you lack in people skills to the point where anything happens with you and a black person, a cop got to be there. Somebody failed you. The people that raised you, they failed you. YouTube employees who called 911 on black man in his building explains his actions and apologize. Well, if you didn't do anything wrong, why apologize? See, I know this dude is full of shit, y'all. And he's full of shit because when he was on that phone, he was smiling. He knew what he was doing. And that tells me he's done this before. He's done it before. This ain't the first time. And he's done it before to a black person. And, you know, so he's all over here wailing about the encounter and talking about his father this and his father that. You know, look, my cousin was murdered last year down in North Carolina. My family don't go around kicking up these incidents because of that. And in my opinion, he's just using that to drum up sympathy from the public. And I bet you he uses that as an excuse for a lot of things. So, of course the black man that filmed the whole thing, put it up on Facebook and it took off. And then Tariq Nasheed got it from Twitter. And then it, it just spread like wildfire, went out millions of times and it was reviewed, getting a boost from the Twitter page of filmmaker Tariq Nasheed. Then it was picked up by tabloid media outlets such as the New York Daily News and the Daily Mail. To many, you know, it just shows the typical thing, hashtag living while black. And this happened in the Bay Area. Nothing that happened should have involved a cop. Seriously, it, nothing that happened should have involved a cop. Even if somebody was tailgating you in a building, that did not, that should not have involved a cop. Okay. It, did the person come in with a weapon? Did the person come in the door threatening you? Did the person push you out of the way and have any physical contact with you? But all of this, well, he was tailgating, going in the building it still should not have involved a cop. That tells me you don't know how to resolve anything. Period. The problem actually is you. So after this took off, a stream of videos began to get posted all around social media. And of course, showing Black people being harassed and cops called while doing really nothing that should have involved a cop. But ladies and gentlemen, they use 
the cops like they're calling customer service. <laughs> That's how they use the cops, like they're calling customer service. So he is trying to explain his side and, you know, he's saying that Michael was a friend of a residence guest in the building and that his actions were also informed by a tragic family. See, he's, he's milking his father's death, which happened in 2012. This is what, 2019, and he's still whining about his father's death from 2012. See, he's using that as an excuse. So, okay, a mentally ill man confronted him. What did your father do to this mentally ill man? Does anybody care to ask? You know, I'm not, just looking at him, did his father do the same thing to a man that was possibly minding his own business? You know, I have to ask. So he claims his this person was trespassing. This guy was waiting for a friend. And if you go back and look at the video, when the friend came out of the building and he spoke to the friend, he turned beet red. Go back and look at the video. He turned beet red. He looked stupid at that point. And of course, he wasn't going to hang up the phone because he was trying to save face. But at that point in time, in the video, when the friend showed up, it, it, everything just went downhill for him. And it just looked like you were just on the phone whining. And he was lying to boot. You know, he wasn't even telling the truth when he was on with 911. He said he was threatened. He wasn't threatened. Okay, so he went into his murdered father from 2012. He's going to milk the hell out of that. And he said he was um, murdered by a trespasser. Well, did your father do the same thing that you just did? Messing with people that are minding their own business? Did he do that? So... Ladies and gentlemen, you know, the bottom line, the problem is people see people going about their daily business and they size you up and think, okay, well, let me go over there and mess with this person. And unfortunately, these are the ones that are the real problem. And it's getting to the point where you see some states and cities are trying to get legislation in place to cut down on these type of things. But in my opinion, they're not moving fast enough. If it's not a real emergency, you shouldn't be calling. Seriously, you should not be calling if it's not a real emergency. And what happened at that building was not a real emergency. It wasn't. And see, the thing is, if he would have listened to his son, None of this would have happened. He got dragged badly out there and he saw, probably saw a lot of the stuff that was being written and it was not in his favor. So now he's in the media milking his father's death and trying to drum up public sympathy. But see, ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is it ain't working. It's not working in his favor. And even after he came forward to say something, it's still not working in his favor. You know, and he knew this. That's why he scrubbed his social media accounts, ladies and gentlemen, because he knew the public was not with him on this. And they shouldn't be. 
plain and simple. He was out with his son and he should have just went on about his business with his son on the 4th of July. But instead of doing that, he created a situation when it should not have been a situation at all. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. But, you know, some people will never learn, plain and simple. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.